Welcome to the second episode of the Month of Beast Wars, and hoo oh boy, does this not bode well for me actually making it to the end of the month talking about my favorite show, without switching to something you all actually care about. Every time I show one of these charts, people get confused, so let me explain. The fat gray line is a projection based on how my videos normally do. So, according to this chart, in this amount of time, a video of mine would normally get between 8,000 and 10,000 views. The blue line is how this video actually did, getting under 5,000 views. So anywhere from 30 to 50% less than normal. So, uh, your likes please give and comment and subscribe and all that stuff? I'm not joking, that really does help. Also, this is technically video number 420. Fucking wee, dude. That is the one and only stoner reference you will be getting in this video. Be glad you got it at all. Anyways, on to the subject of this episode. I have covered quite a few original Beast Wars figures at this point, and every single time they have impressed me, holding up not just as an older figure, but as something you wouldn't even be ashamed of nowadays. So it brings me great joy to say, finally, we've run into one that was just shit even at the time. Oh, what a gloriously rancid piece of trash I have for you today. A sickly and diseased piece of excrement vomited out on the floor by a dog that then ate it again. And let me tell you, I can't express how excited I am to revel in how much this thing sucks. It's Beast Wars Wolfang, a figure I still bought two of so I could have a carded copy because I am a psychopath like that. And this lets me get into the weirdly fraught history of Tigatron, because originally he was supposed to be Wolfang, but thanks to the show running out of budget by making all of the character models twice, they had to make him a repaint of something they already made instead. And thank god for that, because I don't want to have to hate Tigatron, which would just about be impossible if this were his toy. I don't know if a Transformers figure has ever been a bigger failure. On every level, in every way, this thing is a travesty. A sin against us. Proof that if there is a god, he hates Transformers fans. My dear lord, what a piece of shit. Has there ever been a figure with more invasive kibble? This fucker parts forms off huge chunks of the beast mode, and yet he's still choking on remnants of the alt mode that shouldn't be there. He's always standing in some kind of awkward power stance because he can't get his arms down to his sides thanks to the immense saddlebags he's got. His head is crowded by the wolf mode's neck. The wolf's arms are colliding with those, which really is inhibiting his arms overall. It's all just a mess and it looks worse. And I ain't even talking about his stat card yet. Function infantry. Swift and agile. Wolfang prefers to hunt cloaked as an animal, but quickly converts to robot mode for battle. All the Cybertronians do that, dude. You'll die on patrol in robot mode. You aren't a special lone wolf for doing what everyone else is. Where was I? But quickly converts to robot mode for battle. When, should you wear, he can utilize his secret attack launcher disguised as his tail. So you have a gun. That's not a secret, you asshole. Everyone has one of those. Here, let me shoot you with my secret giant fucking thing I have in my hand. Gotta love that his secret attack launcher only gets him a six in firepower. Also, nine speed? Fuck you, dude. You're a dog. Sure, you're faster than, say, a gorilla, but you aren't a speedster. A speed like this would make you faster than some flyers. Eight strength? What, did you write this yourself? Did you think that because you can't get your arms down to your sides, it must be because you're just so muscular? No, dude, you just have pockets with too much shit in them. And then you give yourself an average intelligence with a five. Not a single below average stat. Oh, and don't even get me started on the quality that has always sucked even back in the day. Give this dude a hard shake and his elbows will fall off because those are just held on by friction. Like not even detents, just the magnetic power of two flat surfaces rubbing on each other. All of his kibbles and bits want to come off just about the same way, like his mask, his arms don't have the grip to hold themselves up, and none of this is due to mold degradation. I had this growing up. It was always like this. The only good thing I have to say about this whole figure is that the way the feet are designed is really cool. It's got like a piston in the front made out of dog leg, and even then as a kid I constantly tilted the legs up like this because I thought they were cooler without the dog pistons. Also, no joke, just while leaving this on my desk so that way I can form my observations and write this review, his arm has fallen off three times. It's totally not going to happen during filming because that would be convenient for me, but it is something that I am consistently dealing with right now. And then you've got the worst head in Transformers history. I might not even be exaggerating. For starters, you got his mutant face, which is just a ridiculously oversized domino mask. It looks so stupid because the eyes are wider than the actual head, and they're too low. His field of vision has to be something like this. But then you lift it up, and oh my fucking god. That is the worst thing I have ever borne witness to. Sentinel Prime can go screw himself. The biggest chin in Transformers. Please. This dude sets his dinner on his chin and then tilts his head back to eat. Who in their right mind came up with this idea? This is just about the ugliest thing I have ever seen. I can only imagine the dumbest sounds possible escaping this worthless hole in his face. <laughs> He's got an expression like a Muppet and a chin that gets laughed at by Robert Zadars. Not because Zadars was bigger, but because it made his look reasonable. This is so agonizingly bad. And for what? Why did they do this? So the domino mask can meet up with his chin? Why is that at all important? Is it so this dumbass can look like he can talk? 
I hate this with all of my soul. So the look of this thing is butt ugly, and the quality is bad, but then you get to the accessories, and I hate these too. I have no words for how much it bothers me that his gun has this bend in it because it's supposed to be his tail. That is not an excuse that puts even one bucket of water on the inferno that my OCD is right now. My skin crawls looking at this finger quotes gun. It makes me angry. And then you got his stupid shield, which I do have to hand it to them. It looks more like a shield than the crap that Earthrise Cliffjumper has going on. And while that's true, at the same time, it is still terrible. I still loathe what I am seeing. It's crooked because his wrists don't rotate, and this is just throwing more gas on the fires in my OCD brain right now. This figure is causing me physical pain. And then he's got his missiles that I seem to have lost somewhere that plug into his stomach, which you can see right through without them. It's kind of cool, they have an aesthetic while they're there, but they weren't worth keeping handy for the year I waited to review this thing. So I honestly hate both of these. I want to not have them. To the point where as a kid, I threw these away, and then the posability on this sucks too because of all the kibble, so guess what? As a kid, I also ripped off all these parts and threw them away. This thing is so bad that as a child, I turned it into a red figure because that was an improvement. Have I ever said anything that heinous about a figure before? Head has some up and some extremely rough swivel. Shoulders are blocked up by all the shit fighting it, but once you get it all situated, then you can get a 90 out to the side. Forwards butterfly, fight the kibble some more to get this. Maximum elbows, fight the kibble. No wrists, no thigh rotation. Legs are impeded going forward, fight the kibble to get out to the side and not impeded going backwards. Maximum knees, mafia knees. And feet with heel down and if you untransform it, toe down. I have never reviewed a figure where it was so hard to get what is theoretically really good posing to do what you want it to because of the kibble. He is afflicted with it, terminally infected with it. And then you get to the transformation, which is also just terrible. There is so much bullshit hanging off this dude that everything clashes into each other, parts want to pop off, you need to scrape by everything to get it where it needs to go. Oh, and then there's the massive parts forming with pieces that if you lose them, this thing will never look complete. Theoretically, you can leave the back on, but then the robot mode just looks wrong. However, I can say at least that is an option, though. The one interesting part of this is how the waist elongates to transform, but the rest of this is garbage. The good moments are minor, and the bad is most of it. And then the beast mode is an ugly, swollen brick. Of all the beast formers so far, even including the one-step changers, this is the least convincing looking one. It's a wolf with seam lines a millimeter wide everywhere. The arms are chilling out on the bottom, and god damn this boy is chunky. He looks like he's wearing baggy sweatpants. Plus, why did you guys put the screw holes on the right side of the tail? You could have put them on the bottom. No. Instead, if you're looking at this thing from the side that's visible in the box, you get a face full of silver. This is just so stupid. And are you ready for the posing? Because I don't think you're ready for the posing. Back legs have a little out, a little forward, and a little back. And then maximum knees. And that's it. He literally only has rear leg articulation, which I don't know about you, but I don't find all that useful. So overall, this thing sucks like a black hole. There is nothing good about it. The robot mode looks cancerous, covered in kibble so bad he can't breathe. The quality is garbage, constantly popping joints. The head is horrible, looking like a rejected animated design that was discarded for being too ugly to live. The accessories are stupid, giant, and awkward, though you can at least leave the shield on the back in robot mode, even if it's kind of a pain to transform him around it. And if you lose that piece, then the alt mode is ruined, though ruined is a subjective term when dealing with something that's already that bad. The posability, once again, would be great by even modern standards like most Beast Wars figures. Unfortunately, the kibble rears its ugly head once more, making using any of that a nightmare. Transformation is a pain, and if you don't pop something off while doing it, you will be lucky. And the beast mode is basically just a really bad statue of a wolf that looks neither fun nor accurate. This is a goofy ass, lame piece of flabby trash whose best quality is that it actually stands easily without falling over. The only original Beast Wars figure that I can think of off the top of my head I just warn people not to buy that doesn't have gold plastic syndrome. And that's not half of the trash I can talk on this thing, but it is enough of the insults I can hurl its way for now. And I know, you know, what everyone else tells you to do at the end of these videos. So, if you liked what you saw here, please do that. And if you'd like to take it a step further, then please, share this video with any friend you think may be interested. I hope you all enjoyed listening to me waste your time.